Well, today um, I've had all my notes at home, and I left them at home. So what do you do when you leave your note at home? All right. So Don said, wing it, and uh, Deborah said, go with your hearts. What should I do? You're all, there you go, Don, you're off. Anyway, that's, um, I want to get you ready for communion, okay? I don't know about you, but to me it means a lot. And it should mean a lot, because he said to us, do this in my memory, or in memory of me. So we gather together, when we worship, we worship in his memory, right? When we take communion, we do the same. When we praise him, whatever we do, we do it in his name. And I don't have any notes, so I can't go by my head. Because I am intellectually locked. You know what that means? That means I go by my head. So I look for my note. My note's not here. Then I panic. God said, go by your heart. Too many times we go from our head. We got it all figured out. It's in black and white, and you read it. And I'm not saying I don't miss my note. I do. But I'm going to have to go from my heart. And you're going to have to be patient with me. And you're going to have to receive the message that God has for you. Because sometimes he changes things. And when he changes things, you're not ready and you get nervous and everything, but you got to trust. And you got to trust in him. And I do have something. I got the word of God. Thank God I didn't forget my Bible. Amen. <laughs> All right. So, uh, communion is mentioned uh, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and 11, Corinthians 11, four times in the Bible. Three times from the apostle, one time is from Paul, which had revelation about communion. And as we come together, we, we're going to read what he said in his word. Maybe Candy can put it on. It's uh, Luke chapter 22. I decided to pick on Luke today. I said, read the scripture. And starting at verse 15, And he said unto them, With desire, I have desire. He said it twice this year, yeah? With desire, I have desire. To heat this Passover with you before I suffer. He's looking forward in doing the Passover with his team. He's looking forward with desire, I have desire to, to, because this is it. This is my last meal. Now, I know when you speak on communion, you can go in many ways. You can talk about the Passover. You can talk about healing. You can have a prophetic communion service. You can uh, go a different direction, but today I, I just want to focus in one direction. He said, do this in memory of me. And he meant it. So sometimes, so many times, how many knows this? You've seen that before. Yes. What is it? What does that represent? We do this in memory of those who went to war, or those who died in the war, who, fight, who fought for our freedom. And you know, one day, the 11th month of the uh, 11 days of the 11th hour and the 11th minute. We bow our head for one minute. Because my wife's brother died there. 
My wife has uh, come from a family of 20 in two different beds. He got married twice. Twelve, uh, eight children first and 12 children after. My father-in-law fought in the two war and his son died there. And uh, every time I think about when the day of remembrance come, I think about all the people who died. And for one minute we bow our head and maybe this is it for the next year. Personally, I believe they deserve more than that. And Jesus deserves more than that, too. And, you know, we can come here, take a little piece of a cracker, add a little bit of juice, and just do the thing. And you know what? It's just a thing. It's a mind-driven thing. We don't do it with our heart. When we do it with our heart, there's benefit that goes with it. There's a scripture, it's Psalm 103, verse 1, 2, 3 says this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefit. And he healed. No, he forgave all of my iniquity first. And you know, when we take communion, we have to remember that he has forgiven all our iniquity, all our sin. Amen. And you know what? If we're thankful for nothing, we're thankful for that. Because of him. See, because of my brother and many men that died and fought, we have freedom in this place. I can go home and sleep at night. But because of Jesus, I have eternity. I can sleep at night because I know the day I depart, I'm going to be with him for a lifetime. And that's because he died. So did I start reading yet? No. Okay. Remember, I got a lot of excuses. I got no note, right? And he said unto them, with desire, I did start reading. I have read that. I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Now remember one thing. The Passover is Passover. As a Gentile and believer, we don't do the Passover anymore. I mean, I know it's nice and everything, but we do the Remembrance Day. We do the communion. We come before him, right, as we are, and we partake of that bread that he has. And this, this is his body, right? Now, I want to tell you something. In the 1500, what happened is you believe that when you took the bread, that was the body of Jesus. And the Catholic Church taught that. They didn't know any better. That's the body. You're, you're chewing on the body of Jesus, and then we're drinking. You're drinking the blood of Jesus, right? And uh, they thought that, and people began to have the word in the 1500. And they saw that it's not Jesus' body. It represents his body. Amen. And people died, uh, torture, and they, they, they were uh, set on fire because they would not agree with the doctrine that they said. Many people, thousands of them, got saved, and they got baptized in water. And, and there was a reformation. There was a change of pace. It was costly to believe that this represent the body of the Lord Jesus. Amen. For I say unto you, verse 16, I will not eat any more thereof until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So he's saying here, boy, when I eat again, it's going to be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and he gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among yourself. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. 
And then he went on, verse 19, and he, he took the bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it unto them, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. His body was broken for you. And he says to them, do this in memory of me. Take that bread. Break it. Eat it. Do this and remember that I was broken. And I went to the cross. That I suffer. I was whipped. I was put on a crown and I died painfully for you. That's what we remember. We do this because of him, because he told us to do this. I, um, I want to take you to one of the nicest scriptures in the Bible. I mean, there's a lot of nice ones, right? But it's found in John chapter 8. And uh, the beginning of the chapter talks about the adulterous woman. I don't know, it doesn't talk about the adulterous man, but it talks about the, so she had to have a man, right? So we don't know who was the adulterous, the woman or the man. Probably here is the woman. And she was caught in the very act of adultery. Wow, I need a box of Kleenex. Anybody see Kleenex around? All right, we're getting, we're gonna have to stack up on Kleenex here. Thank you, and I'll take the box. I'm gonna get crying. All right, so she was caught in the act and the Jewish people brought her before Jesus. And he said to him, what do we do with her? The law says she must die. She's committed a crime. And you know, I want to bring that to you because in remembrance of what he's done, the law said, you have sinned also. I have sinned also. And what brings sin into my life? Because I have sinned the same way, the law said, you must die to pay for your sin. But aren't you glad today? That somebody stepped out ahead of you to pay for your sin. And his name is Jesus. Verse 5 says, Now Moses in the law commands us, it's a commandment, you should be stoned. But what do you say, Master? Right? And verse 7, he says to them, He that is without sin among you. Let him first cast a stone to her. Whoever has no sin. So there's nobody. Bible says in uh, Romans 3, 23, that all men have sinned and come short of his glory. Now, every time we come to communion, we come to, to partake. Yes, we have a covenant with him. Yes, we have been established, but we were, remember where he took us from. This lady standing or kneeling beside Jesus had no answer. The law condemned us. So the law condemned each one of us. And it's not a condemning message. It's because, you know, we understand that. And this woman was there in front of Jesus. And I want to just read Verse 10, now Jesus had lifted himself and saw none but the woman, because, you know, he said to them, whoever has no sin, throw the first stone. And you know what? They all walked away one by one. There was nobody to judge her. We're not to judge anybody. Nobody. All right? And there was nobody. And Jesus said, woman... Where are those who accuse you? Where are those who accuse you? 
And she looked around, and all these guys with the stone in their hand, I dropped the stone and it left gone. And he said to her, Has no man condemned you? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I command the, uh, condemn you. Go and sin no more. Amen. So we got to stay in a state of forgiveness in our life all the time. The adversity, adversity, the adversary, it's pretty close. The devil walks around seeking someone that he can condemn. And maybe he's found you today and he wants to condemn you. Maybe he's found somebody else today or maybe he found somebody that he can put his word there and notify the word that Jesus spoke. That's the adversary. The time we're going to live this life, we're going to have to cope with him and tell him where to go. Isn't that right? So Jesus said to the lady, he says, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. I like that. Now, I don't know for sure. That's not scripture. If I ask you, what do you think happened to this lady? Supposition. I think this lady thought, well, this is close. This was close today. It cannot get any closer than that. And I think because she heard the word of Jesus, the man who saved her life, said, go and sin no more. I personally believe that this woman's life was changed. She could have became a follower of Jesus after. There was a lot of women followed Jesus. Her life was changed. So because Jesus forgave you your sin, because you come to a time of remembrance of what he's done, you've got to remember that you were like that lady. It was close. It was close. And I believe God has a day appointed for everybody to hear the gospel. And people have to make a decision. We made a decision a long time ago. We never turned back. I'm always here like Peter, where else can I go? <laughs> where else can you go? But we live in, in a world that's so um, corrupt today. I know it was corrupt before. I mean, I was talking to somebody one time. He says, they said, uh, you know, there's no sinner like in, uh, in um, Jamaica. Oh, yeah, Jamaica is the worst sinner in the world. Yeah, they do. Because, see, in, ja in Jamaica, what happened? You're either a good believer or you're a good sinner. There's nobody that's in the middle. Nobody that writes the, friend, the, the fence. Isn't that true, uh, Linda? Nobody writes the fence. Anyway, we could talk about that. But anyway, so we come to the table forgiven, okay? We come to the table forgiven. And we break this bread that he told us to eat in remembrance of him. We take it and crack it and partake of it and say, Lord, you went out for me. Without you, I wouldn't be here. You know, we partake of communion many times, but I want to tell you about one time. You can have communion on your own if you want, by yourself, with a friend. And one day we were in, in Mississauga and we were taking communion. We were four. And we were uh, sitting on the floor with a little plate, and there was four pieces of bread. And I'm looking at the bread, and I saw the little dog. <laughs> He's looking at the bread. He's sitting there, and his eye was on the bread. 
You know, some dog that, that you can't train them? That must have been one of those. <laughs> so everybody takes a piece of bread, and we're praying. You know, we, we're blessing the bread. And I don't remember who was praying or whatever. But all I remember is everybody had their bread in front of them. <laughs> and I had my bread behind me. And I had my bread, and, and we're ready, and we bless the bread and everything, and then I heard, Choo! the darn little thing ate my bread. <laughs> and he's sitting there, and his, uh, his lips are just moving, and I said, this, this dog ate my bread, and everybody was laughing and everything, right? And he, I realized that, you know, the dog partake of communion with us. I said, you know, if you partake of communion and it's not uh, in a good way, this dog could die or he could be really sick. Isn't that true? That's right. And it's just to remind us that, you know, our position as we take communion should be that, hey, look at my life. All right? I got to look at myself. I can't look at somebody else. I got to look at myself and say, how did they do, Lord? Did I mess up? Am I thankful for what you've done for me? Where am I going? Question ourselves so we get to the place where we see, okay, God will talk to you. You know, if we give God a minute, chances are he'll talk to us. It's just sometimes maybe we don't give him a minute. 